Good day, I'm Chris Cordani, Dr. Jerome Corsi's producer. Welcome again to The Truth Central. Dr. Corsi is continuing on with his extensive research into suspicious voter roll algorithms with election interference potential in several U.S. states as we go down into the home stretch before the election. On this edition of the show, we're going to be playing a recent conversation he had with Lance Wallenau to hone in on what it will take for states to take real action. This is as part of the Real Steel series on the True Central. You can find out more about this effort and how to donate to help Dr. Corsi, Andrew Paquette, Dr. Carleen Graves, and the team expose the threat and stop the real steel through the website gods5stones.com. That's gods5stones.com. Now, here is Dr. Corsi's discussion with Lance Wallenau. Dr. Corsi, are you with us? There he is. I'm right, right here. I'm good, glad to be with you, Lance. Thank you very much. All right. Now, this this is here where we're all stressed out because we're fighting for this election. We've gone through swing state tours. They did a courage tour in like five or six swing states. We've taken media hits. It's cost us a lot of money and life and energy. Even our own lives are on the line. And then to find out at the end of the day, the election is in this precarious balance so close. And still... There's a question about the integrity of the process. Bring our audience up to date on what you've uncovered regarding the thing we need to be paying attention to. Well, remarkably, we found this came from another computer genius, uh, Andrew Paquette, uh, who has got a Ph.D. actually in computer graphics in the New York State database, which is the first one we found it in. And this is the state board of election voter registration database there's an algorithm there's coded messages actually it's a intelligence grade cipher that allows for the creation of records voter records from people who don't exist non-existent voters yet they can be given state ids it's a very complicated scheme it involves re numbering the entire state database. It's not in accordance with the date of registration. And then through uh, several mathematical manipulations, it's like a a scheme to hide marked cards. So these false records can be created, and the criminals who designed this system have put these records where they can find them, but you can't. They look like normal, regular, legitimate voter records. And so the criminals running this scheme, as the election goes on, they can draw upon these non-existent voters, make sure they get mail-in ballots, and vote those ballots through the machine. And since the number, the voter ID number, the legitimate number given to that non-existent voter matches the number of the mail-in ballot, they have a certifiable vote, which is um, able to be counted. So you're sitting there manipulating the system, and often the even the state board of uh, election officials don't know it's there. But if I'm the criminal, uh, the political scientist, I can start voting my non-existing voters to influence an election. In New York, I'd probably have 300,000 of these hit away in the database. And so I'd say to you, do you want Kamala Harris to win by 1%, 3%, or 5%? you want her to come on late in the afternoon or the evening? Do you want me to stop the voting? She'll come on in the morning. Because with 300,000 non-existent voters that I can get mail-in ballots uh, registered and, and through the system and counted as voted, I can change any election that I'm, I'm while watching, including down, down ballot elections for Senate, for Congress, for anything. Because I'm running the election. You're not. And these algorithms we now found in about 10 different states, including Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. Well, shortly, our website is gods5stones.com. All this data is there, G-O-D, no apostrophe for the S, gods, you spell out five, F-I-V-E, and then stones, plural, S-T-O-N-E-S, gods5stones.com. We just posted today the algorithm that we found in Pennsylvania. You posted the algorithm you found in Pennsylvania. So, so let me just feedback to you what I think our audience and I are hearing. There's a a coded algorithm, meaning there's a sequence of codes 
that creates a fictitious voter that looks like a real voter. They, uh, then they, the number of them is drawn out and put into the system so that, uh, but they're put in at a certain spaced sequence. So it must be a rather complicated algorithm. So it isn't like 001, 002, 000. It's like leap. How did you guys, how are you possibly able to prove that? Well, it, the, because uh, it really takes a genius level to ca calculate this. Andrew Paquette is remarkably good in, in finding patterns. Once you've found an algorithm, it's like breaking a code. You can read the message. And so this is mathematical. We can show you how this number scheme in, in determines the voter ID and how it, it registers. I mean, I'll give you a very simple example. It's like saying, you know, everybody says my firstborn child was, you know who that was. And my third child, our third child was good in mathematics. Well, so the state of New York or all these states with algorithms say, well, your first child is number one. Your second child is number 12. Your next child is number 23, then 34 and 45, and your sixth child is 56. They say, well, I don't have 56 kids. And they say, no, but our records show 56 kids in your database. And by renumbering things, kids number two through 11 are somebody else's. And by the way, kid number three and kid number seven don't exist. We made them up. And you won't be able to tell that because they all look like real kids. So they all get state voter IDs. And then we use another algorithm, another complex system to hide them in the database. So it's like marked cards. And we can pull out the marked cards and use them when we want. So we pull out all these fake voters to vote mail-in ballots. And they will look real. They'll have real state IDs. They'll vote, but they, but they don't exist. And they're very hard to find in the database by just looking at it because they look like legitimate kids or legitimate voters. You'd have to go out into the community and see that that person doesn't exist. You have to do field research, forensic examination, and the states don't do that. So with these algorithms, this, you're not in control of voting. Whoever is running the algorithm could be <clears throat> intelligence agents. It could be whomever. But... These are intelligence agency grade complication, and they're very sophisticated mathematically. So we could say this is like CIA level uh, software and uh, programming that is involved. And, and for all we know, this is how uh, some of these elections me uh, mechanics are being done in Venezuela and other countries. This is what we've been hearing all along, that America yeah, helped provide yeah. the technology. The algorithms have been in the states since 2007, and there may be a lot of people already in Congress who shouldn't be there. The algorithms put them there. I don't know, but I suspect it. And then you see the same things going on in Europe. So the last European election, they start the election. So first ballot, conservatives are doing very well. The second ballot, the, uh, they say the left surge because the left won. Well, I call up in Italy and I call up in France and say, is there a surge in the voting? So Dr. Corsi, there's nobody at the polls. The surge is happening in the computers. And that's when the criminals who devise these schemes are voting the voters who don't exist. Wow. And you won't know it. You won't know it unless you did forensic examination. Well, and the forensic examination, unfortunately, is what you call the canvas. And the canvas right. requires a lot of money and time. And, the, and if it's a close, closely manipulated vote, then for 1%, it looks like, you know, what, you're denying the electoral process now, you're in denial, and you're going to tie up uh, certification for weeks while you go door to door. And the way that they've set it up, 100,000 votes uh, out of, you know, millions are going to be, they're, they're buried out there, aren't they? You'd have to do all the votes. So that now I'm understanding today that Georgia is going to say, well, what Trump's team wants is they want to hand correlation of every ballot, count them so that we, they're correlated. But to your point, they could be fake legitimate votes. I mean, they're legitimate people with names, but the people themselves, if you went to their address, they don't exist. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying, yes. And, and the fact is, you won't know, the, because a voter with a legitimate state ID wanted a mail-in ballot, I mean, you could do this all on the computers, 
and then that ballot was run through the validation system, whether or not it was even printed, it would count because the numbers would match. And then even in a recount, that's all that they check. They don't go out into the community and see if these people exist. So the whole scheme is to get a certifiable vote, a certifiable non-existent person to vote and to have that ballot counted. That's what the whole point of this scheme is. And every one of the states we're finding these algorithms has the same characteristic. They've got thousands of clone votes, which is the same voter has multiple registrations. It can be used multiple times. They have uh, uh, ghost votes. People just don't exist at all, and they make them up for a certain location. They have locations where hundreds of people are registered, and that location turns out to be a, a post office box or a fire station. So again, all these irregularities in the state's databases, and there's uh, every single state I've looked at has them. It is tens and tens of hundreds of thousands of these Surely. fake votes. Are, well, well, okay, so there. We, got, we got about 40 seconds left in this segment. I want to hold you over, if you don't mind, for the next segment. Sure. So I want to talk to you about the, the, the second level of this is the state... Um, you know, in people in office is where we have to go next. So you're going to have the attorney general or the secretary of state. And I want to talk to you about do, are there any of them cooperative with you? Is anyone, uh, can anyone see the data that you can make the argument and say, Hey, this is a valid problem. And I want to talk to you about what's gone, happened in Ohio. And I want to talk to you about what the next step is in Pennsylvania. And listen, we're just weeks away. We have to come together with a strategy. That's why I want to get you on a lot of platforms right now. Doc, here's the thing. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, looking at uh, Richard Barris with his great detail on all the crosstabs. I mean, he does a meticulous job of, of parsing the voting and uh, based on samples and surveys he's got of ethnic groups and age groups and education status and physical location, urban or suburban or rural. And it's going to be very conspicuous. I mean, we're going to, we're, it's, we won't be alone is what I'm saying. You're saying, you know, you're, you're raising an alarm. I'd say it's like after the iceberg's been hit uh, in terms of like that we're already down there in the final, you know, momentum here. But I do think that if we have an artificial turnout, there's going to be serious additional whistleblowers that are going to say this is not logical. Something is skewed. The data we have that we've been looking at and polling in these areas does not include 100,000 of, you know, votes from uh, unknown, unknown sources. So there's, there's going to have to be a mechanism to respond after the fact Proactively, what have you been able to do to get in front of this to get the attention of people in government? Well, we've got uh, Ohio State, the state secretary of state in Ohio is taking a look at it, and uh, they agreed to an investigation. Uh, we haven't heard any results of the investigation yet, and I suspect they're saying, well, show us the fraudulent votes. Well, the problem is we have to have more data to do that. We don't have access to data that was scrubbed from the file. We, the, just the existence of the algorithm is itself inherently suspect because its purpose is it, it doesn't have any justification to be in the state database. It doesn't make it more simple. It makes it more complicated. It hides data and obscures data, and that's against the laws, including the uh, Help America Vote Act, HAVA, from 2002. These are illegal to be there, and that's the point is that the fact that they exist are, is illegal. And by the way, uh, there are telltale signs of the of their use because what happens is that a candidate, it's like a psychological operation. So, you know, a, a Biden was too far distant from Trump to be credible. So they pick Kamala and they say, well, Kamala now starting to surge and look at her poll numbers are better. So they're building a, a, a false narrative based on polling that it doesn't exist also that's, or is oversampling Democrats. So that when they start stealing these uh, algorithm-created non-existing voters, it'll be reasonable. And usually there's a surge. What happens is that Trump will be leading, and then suddenly the, the, the underdog starts surging. And if they stop counting, and when they resume counting, the underdog suddenly is above Trump, these are all signs that algorithms are being used. 
And again, once you recognize the signs, you can blow the whistle. Uh, the major antidote for this is, first of all, get massive turnout. People say, I'm showing you that the election fraud works, and so don't vote. No, I'm saying vote in massive numbers. It's the best antidote. So is, is it helpful or not helpful if you have people writing to the state attorney general or secretary of state to say, take this serious? I mean, are they taking it serious, or do we need to put a little bit of media, you know, like the war room posse? Do we have to put people on this to say, hey, we're concerned? Does it help? Yeah, it, it helps a lot because, again, they, they want to pull the, you know, the, the wool over this and not have it looked at and say, oh, there's legitimate reasons for these algorithms. There's no legitimate reason for them. And there are, you know, there are many, many, it, it should be investigated uh, that anybody as a, as a intelligence agency, you know, cryptography built into their voting registration database I mean, I'm a political scientist. I've been working on election data since the 1960s. You know, if you if I had the system, I could say, look, I'll just run a simulation of the election. It'll be so good, nobody will tell the difference, and I'll just vote my simulation and throw the votes away. Klaus Schwab is already saying in the World Economic Forum, we don't need voters. You know, we know what the electorate is going to do. We, we don't need voters. So, again, th these tools are so sophisticated and they're hard to detect. And when when Andrew Paquette began finding them, now he's gotten very good at it. So we found we found algorithms in uh, New York, New Jersey, Ohio, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. We're about to announce that we've also found them in Texas. Uh, we're looking at Arizona. We're finding algorithms in every state database we look at. And these are illegal. They shouldn't be there. Many of them have been there since 2007. And, you know, the, the anecdote is a couple of things. And what we can do is, first of all, demand that the state attorney generals take this seriously. And also the state secretaries of state running the election boards. We can demand that all these records that are false records, you know, the clones, the people who are, have registered before they were born. You know, there's lots of these hidden ballots in there that can be called out of the database before an election starts. But the fact is, you know, if the CIA decided that they don't need to run elections overseas only, they want to run our elections, this is the perfect method for intelligence agents to be running our elections. And if there's, they line up with Democrats and say, we're going to steal the election for Kamala Harris, I'm saying it's something we need to be wary of, and it could happen. Well, you, you know what bothers me the most? I don't, people don't realize this. I was at January 6th. I admit it. I was there. I was in the front row listening to what Donald Trump had to say because I really wanted, I believed then that there was a need for a verification of the authenticity of the voting record before the election was certified. That's why I was there, to make sure that as an American I was making an electoral protest on the integrity of the process. Let's make sure it's clear. I don't mind losing in a legitimate election. I don't like losing in a manipulated one. Now, John Eastman stood up right next to Donald Trump before Trump spoke. And Doc, he basically said what you're saying. He explained to the audience how it's possible for manipulated dockets or packets uh, of votes to be preset that could be drawn upon and used in order electronically to fill up a void and that is, and here he is at, at a very important moment in history, explaining as a as a distinguished lawyer uh, the process by which this is done electronically and algorithmically, and here you are resurfacing the same uh, narrative with more, with, I, I suppose, with better evidence with Andrew Paquette, but it's not like I haven't heard this before. That's the part that's freaking me out that I don't know where that argument went for four years, but the news didn't cover it. I mean, it was as obvious as the speech that was given that day. That was what they were pointing at as the, as the problem with fraud. So uh, who, is the, who, is, who are you dealing with in Ohio that you got this with in front of right now? It's with, uh, uh, right now it's with Frank LaRose, who is the Secretary of State. It's in his office, and he's dealing with it. And he's the one who should be responding to this. 
I've written a couple of articles recently on American Thinker. We pointed out these problems because we can show you the mathematical formulas and the difference between where we are today and where we were four years ago is we've cracked the code. We can show you the cryptography that's used. And it's like the Pythagorean theorem in the Euclidean geometry. It, it, you can't exist. You can't deny it exists. Well, these algorithms exist and we can show you how they're used. So it's proof positive arithmetically. Uh, also, I want to also uh, judge in Arizona, federal district judge ruled that Arizona in 2022, uh, Cochise County, County would not certify the election. And the state secretary of state had a, a rule that they just ignored Cochise County and they certified the election for the state despite Cochise County not certifying the election. This federal district judge, I just wrote about an American thinker, said that that was unconstitutional because Cochise County was disenfranchised. So if there's a county supervisors in any county in a state that suspect the algorithms are there, they can hold up the certification of the election long enough that we could do the investigation needed to prove that the algorithms were used. It's, it's like, let's say you're playing 21 in a casino and you find out the casino has been using marked cards. That casino cannot prove that you lost any given hand. Well, similarly, if the database of the voters at the State Board of Election have algorithms in it, you can't prove that any given candidate lost. They might have lost because the algorithms were used. So you cannot use a database with algorithms, algorithms in it to certify an election. That, again, doesn't work. And so, therefore, this scheme is, is inherent when we find the algorithm, it's already criminal and already puts the entire election in that state under, under play and into question. Well, and then when it seems to me that we should be getting that theory of the case over with America First Policy Institute. I got friends of mine funding 30 or 50 lawyers already in case there's election fraud. Um, but we should be proactive about it and say, hey, if in New York, Ohio, New Jersey, Wisconsin, Texas, Pennsylvania, Arizona, if they're using this algorithm, if, they, if they're using um, uh, processes that incorporate these algorithms, then automatically we're questioning the result if the result is, is going to be dubious. Is that true? That's true. And in fact, the difference between where we are today, on godsfivestones.com, we published technical papers. They're hard to read, but we've shown you the formulas. And Andrew Paquette, to any group of experts, we've already done it to professional cryptographers who agree these algorithms are there, agree their intelligence grade, and we can prove it to anybody who wants to see it, because now today we have the arithmetic and the algorithmic proof that these codes exist in the state databases. And so far, they're in virtually every state database we've examined. I think they could be in every state database in the country. Wouldn't it be something if someday we come to discover that way back since uh, Obama and uh, Romney ran, that elections were being manipulated by data processes and that the will of the people was being thwarted by an oligarchy that in the intelligence community that knew better. Oh, my gosh, what that would do, what that would open up. Dr. Corsi, thank you very much for being with us. you got gods5stones.com. I'm sure they can support you there. You need to have some funding. I know, I know what it's like to work out of your own pocket to go save the union. So we appreciate what you're doing. I'm going to try to get you in front of Gene Bailey and Flashpoint. We're going to try to get this in Real America's Voice. Thanks for your work. We'll be following up with you. And, uh, and, and please keep us in the loop regarding what you're discovering with the algorithms and what the state uh, politicians are doing to support or hinder your crusade for truth. Thanks, Doc. We'll see Thank you again. You. God bless you.